Get the best for trouble for the last one. one. Get the best no, one. No, I'm not. Uh, what's your secret to a long-lasting marriage? Ah. Oh. Sex. Back in about 82, 83, you I was working through some of the ideas that I discussed at the beginning of my lecture tonight on the existential philosophy front. And I was really, I'd been obsessed for, I was about 20 then, 22, something like that. I'd been obsessed for a long time, by that time, for like nine years with the problem of malevolence, the problem of evil, which I started to study when I was about 13. And I had realized one of the things I, told you about tonight, which was that in totalitarian states of the sort, say, that made themselves manifest in Nazi Germany, the totalitarian state was the grip of the lie on everyone, that it wasn't political, it wasn't economic, it wasn't even actually psychological, although that would be closer, it was a spiritual problem, and it had to do with people's willingness to ally themselves with the spirit of deception to allow themselves to be possessed by by lies and that's what that's the central reality of totalitarianism what goes along with that is that the antidote to the totalitarian monstrosity in its most brutal forms so its auschwitz level forms let's say is truth and that each individual who wishes to avoid the hell of totalitarian atrocity avoids that insofar as they swear by all that's holy, let's say, to live in and speak the truth. And I became completely convinced of that, or as convinced as, you know, as convinced as you can be if you take things as seriously as you can. I mean, it's very difficult to never use your language in a de deceitful or manipulative manner, but, you know, you can you can practice that and get better and better at it. And by the time I was about 22 or 23, I realized that the pathway out of tyranny was truth. And so when Tammy and I got together, I'd known Tammy, I've known Tammy for 52 years. We were childhood friends and I really liked spending time with her when I was a kid, like I do now. It's very similar. In fact, in recent years, especially, she just about died, and so did I. And so, the fact that we're both alive is a miracle on both fronts, and we're Woo! taking that for granted. And one of the consequences, one of the surprising consequences, consequences of this, of that, is, is that we rediscovered a lot of the manner in which we used to interact when we were kids. Um, not that we'd ever lost that entirely, but it's become rejuvenated in a remarkable way, and, um, which is absolutely, it's been a continual source of amazement, truthfully. But when Tammy and I decided to get married, uh, we danced around each other for a long time. She, she was my grad escort. She asked me to be my, her grad escort prom date, American parlance. Um, and then we saw each other romantically from time to time for a number of years. When she finally decided to come to Montreal, I invited her to Montreal um, after I saw a Jane Sibbery con concert. Jane Sibbery is a Canadian musician who looks quite a lot like Tammy and actually sounds like her. And I went to this concert and I thought, huh, she kind of reminds me of Tammy. And I knew Tammy was in Ottawa, which isn't that far from Montreal. I invited her to come and see me for Thanksgiving. and. That went pretty well. And uh, we decided shortly thereafter to, to get married. But I told her that if we were going to get married, I had a precondition, and the precondition was that we were not going to lie to each other. That that was the rule, and I meant it. I would, that, would, that, wasn't, that wasn't a casual request. I knew by that time that, well, I knew what I just told you, which is that the, the prince of deceivers 
entices you to hell. I know that to be true. And I thought, there's no way I'm walking down that road, no matter what. And so that became a f foundation stone for our marriage. And that caused quite a lot of trouble because when we had trouble, this is just it was all out war, you know, constantly. It's like we were going to get to the bottom of things. And everyone brings their problems into a relationship. And problems are deep and sometimes they're multi-generationally deep. And getting to the bottom of things is no more pleasant than surgical exploration of a separating wound. It's not for the faint-hearted, that's for sure. And that's another thing you learn as a psychotherapist if you're a good one. And there's a lot of darkness in the abyss and the nooks and the crannies. And you have to be willing to confront that and in you and in your partner, together and apart. And you bloody well better be hope, hope you have the spirit of truth to guide you through that morass. But Tammy, more than me, I would say even, has committed to that right away. And, you know, we, we came together with our problems. And of course, those problems interfered with our ability to communicate. But I don't know if I ever doubted her commitment to the process of confession and atonement, let's say. And because of that, we've been able to maintain our romance and our adventure through thick and thin. And some of it's been thick in the best possible way, and some of it's been thin in ways that are almost unimaginable. And so, nonetheless, here we are. And so Woo! All right, everyone. Thank you. It was a pleasure talking to you all tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate turning the lights on. You see how many people are here. A lot of people here. Woo! Lovely to be in Florida. Keep an eye out for the 13th. Good night. 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 Good